Over the years, and especially when I was growing up, the LEGO Group presented a number of its themes as though they occurred in the past, present, and future of one big LEGO world. I loved this idea and was always trying to figure out how the different themes might play out on a linear timeline. And now, after some very linear, slow time traveling of my own, it's time to finally put these pieces into place. Before we get started, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. This is a completely arbitrary way of looking at LEGO toys. While the LEGO Group often suggests that its themes share a common history and shared world, the approach differs from source to source, whether it's on different islands or different corners of a garage or a kid's brain. Here we're assuming that somewhere in the vast LEGO multiverse there's some kind of linear timeline, and that's what we're looking at today. So here are my completely arbitrary ground rules. 1. We're just focusing on original LEGO minifigures themes with a two-set minimum to qualify. 2. Sometimes I've just had to take my best guess on when these themes take place. 3. We will be using information from the catalogs, books, magazines, audio dramas, etc. when appropriate. 4. The collectible minifigures and one-off sets cover an even longer span of history. I'll be adding these to the timeline in future videos. Alright, boring rules out of the way, let's rip up our time cruiser, spin the hypno disc, and put on all the hats because we're going back to the before the now. Let's go. 500 CE, Lego Castle. 1978 to 1983. Lego's earliest castle sets were sometimes depicted as being part of a modern-day medieval fair to complement the town theme, but this soon changed and castle became Lego's first historical theme. In the Lion Knight's Castle Instruction Manual, a note from Majesto the Wizard suggests that the Yellow Castle was constructed generations before the classic castle sets of the 1980s. A Swedish advertisement from 1980 puts the earliest of the castle sets during the time of King Arthur and the comic strip character Prince Valiant. Among the many early castle factions were the Crown Knights of the Yellow Castle. The 10305 Lion Knight's castle includes shields from many of these factions, perhaps indicating that they eventually joined forces to become the Knights of the Lion. 900 CE Vikings 2005-2006 LEGO Vikings pitted Scandinavian seafarers of legend against dangerous monsters in far-off lands. While this theme never had a firm date, there have been several collectible Viking minifigures, including the Viking Woman, who is dated at 900 CE in a timeline in the LEGO Absolutely Everything You Need to Know book. Nexo Knights This futuristic take on Castle has an elderly wizard mentor, Murloc 2.0, preparing five young knights to do battle against one of his resurrected foes. This seems to take place in its own universe independent from the rest of LEGO Castle. However, the Nexo Knights TV show Season 1, Episode 6, The Golden Castle, shows that the classic Yellow Castle period was about 500 years in the show's past, so if the two universes share a common history, this is about when it would be placed. 1000 to 1100 CE. Castle. 2007. In this time, dragons roam free in the wizard's domain of Morax, while King Brutus and his crown knights protect the neighboring western kingdom, the Elflands and the Dwarven Kingdom from trolls in the skeletal hordes of Morax. The Crown Knights here are possibly the successors of the legendary Knights of the Yellow Castle. There are a few sources that support an 11th century date for this incarnation of the theme. In the 2022 video promoting the 10300 DeLorean, Lego, Doc, and Marty are seen crashing into multiple themes and time periods, including a visit to the 10193 Medieval Market Village from 2009, late in the 11th century. In addition, the heroic knight from Series 9 wears the herald of the Crown Knights, and was identified as having lived between 1000 and 1100 in the Everything Timeline. Castle, 1984-1993 to By the time of the classic castle sets, the ambiguous factions of the first wave of castle sets had been refined to two great houses, neither of which had consistent names in their earliest appearances. The Lion Knights were also known as the Guardians of the Grey Castles, Knights of the Lion, and the Crusaders. In the British version of the storyline, they ruled the Kingdom of Avalon and were led by Sir Richard. Their enemies were called the Eagle Knights, the Black Knights, with Black Falcons being the name that eventually stuck. Their leader was the mysterious Black Knight, Sir John Black Ghost. The Forestmen, Forest People, Freebooters, or Forest Guardians were Robin Hood-esque outlaws that robbed from all the established castle factions. According to the UK version of the storyline, they were led by Robin Hood himself, who was usually, though not always, associated with the 12th century and popular legends. At some point during this time, the action was expanded to the land of Taranta, which seemed to border the Lion Knight's kingdom. According to the UK storyline, the dragon-heralded Black Knights were founded when the Black Knight built the Black Monarch's castle, making them a breakaway faction from the Black Falcons. Wolfpack 
1992. This group of renegades, also known as the Wolf People, is an offshoot of the Forest Men, according to the 2011 book Standing Small. The German Lego audio dramas identify their leader as the Great Wolf. Circa 1057. Dragon Masters. Here the wizard Majesto attempts to take over the Black Knight's kingdom, converting a number of their knights to his cause. His breakaway faction proclaim themselves to be the Dragon Masters. It is hinted at in the instructions for the Lion Knight's castle that Majesto spent the next 28 years disembodied. 1085. This is the era of the LEGO Icons 10305 Lion Knight's Castle set, released in 2022. By this time, the Lion Knights are led by the Lady of the House of Lion, who is also described as a queen on the LEGO website. The specific date comes from the DeLorean promo video, which featured an early look at the castle. A date of October 26, 1085 can be seen under the last time departed readout as Doc and Marty arrive at their next destination. The instruction manual for this set established the castle as a peaceful gathering place for formerly warring houses such as the Black Falcons, approximately 28 years after Majesto was disembodied, presumably while leading the Dragon Masters. The wizard has returned here in a new body and appears to be friendly toward the Lion Knights. For now. We also see the 20212-21325 LEGO Ideas Medieval Blacksmith set in this video. We can assume that the 2022-40567 Forest Hideout and the 2021 LEGO Creator 31120 Medieval Castle are also from this time period. Circa 1110s. Kingdoms. 2010 to 2012. Structures from this rebranding of Castle were also included in the DeLorean video, including the 7189 Mill Village Raid and 10223 Kingdoms Joust set. The classic Lion Knights are still one of the main factions here, though their herald has transitioned into a more elaborate version. The Lion's Head is used on armor during this time and will eventually become the dominant symbol of the herald. The king in these sets is unnamed, but we can assume that he is the queen's successor, likely putting kingdoms a generation after 1085. Opposing the Lion Knights are the Dragon Army, who are mentioned by Majesto as a threat in the Lion Knights' castle instructions. Presumably, this is the newest incarnation of the Black Knights. The Black Falcons are also represented by a single knight in the Kingdom's Joust set. 1199. Royal Knights. 1995. A new monarch, King Richard, has emerged to rule over the Kingdom of Saxondale. The Lion Head has largely replaced the earlier Lion Herald designs at this point. King Richard allies with the Black Knights, but a rift forms between the two factions. The Wolfpack and Majesto have both returned, as hinted at in the Lion Knight's castle instructions. King Richard is an enemy of Majesto and the Dragon Masters, but Majesto appears to reform and serves as King Richard's advisor in some stories. The German castle audio drama puts the reign of King Richard in the early Middle Ages, but the first Time Cruisers audio drama has a date of 1199, almost two centuries after the early Middle Ages. This is more consistent with the summer 1995 Bricks and Pieces magazine, which includes a story featuring King Richard and his royal knights that is set after the historical King Richard's death in 1199. Circa 1200s. Dark Forest, 1996. The forest people return with a slight update and a new leader, the wish brand Rob N. Hood. They raid the Black Knights, Dragon Masters, and King Richard's Royal Knights alike. Fright Knights, 1997. The final traditional castle theme in the 90s was set in Bricksylvania and took a turn for the spooky as Majesto's cousin, Willa the Witch, and Basil the Batlord haunt King Richard's Royal Knights and battle each other for control of their own forces. Majesto, Basil the Batlord, and Willa the Witch were mentioned in the Lion Knight's castle instructions, but they are all hinted to be centuries old in various sources, so this time jump still works. 1216, Castle, 2013. In this reborn version of the castle theme, the conflict is between the Lion Knights and the Dragon Soldiers, led by a Dragon Wizard. It seems reasonable to assume that these factions represent the latest incarnation of the Royal Knights and Black Knights, given their similar objectives and heralds. The book Knights and Castles, a Lego adventure in the real world, puts this incarnation of the theme 800 years before 2016. Given how close the timing is to the established 1199 date for the Royal Knights, the nameless Lion King here may be King Henry, the son of King Richard from the German audio dramas, an older version of King Richard himself, or a younger version of King Leo from Knight's Kingdom. Circa 1240s, Knight's Kingdom, 2000. The Lion Knights here are ruled by a new monarch, King Leo, who lives in a castle deep in the Dark Forest. 
They face off against Cedric the Bull, a roving warrior with his own army who is determined to take Leo's castle for his own with his innovative siege engines. King Leo's children include Princess Storm and an unseen son named Edward who is said to be away at the Crusades in the comic book Medieval Mayhem and Mischief. King Leo's elderly appearance indicates quite a time jump from the 1995 Royal Knights and the 2013 version of Castle, but several sources indicate that this is still within a single generation of the previous Castle sets. The PC Legoland game shows a tournament being held in front of the 6091 King Leo's Castle, with Basil the Batlord of the Fright Knights competing against the 1995 Royal Knights. In Germany, King Leo was called King Richard, raising the possibility that both characters might be one and the same. Circa 1260s, Knight's Kingdom 2, 2004. Knight's Kingdom, with an unofficial 2, isn't exactly a sequel to the previous theme. In the far-off Kingdom of Morica, multicolored knights band together to defend King Matthias from the machinations of his sinister advisor, Lord Vladek. This was conceived as a far-fetched fantasy world outside of the pseudo-historical setting of previous castle themes, a niche that would later be filled by Nexo Knights. This aspect was dropped, and instead, Knight's Kingdom was dialed back into a vague medieval setting. While it is at odds with most other castle themes in design and tone, there are connections to the larger continuity. King Matthias is represented by a lion that was a deliberate reference to the earlier Lion Knights tying his Kingdom of Morica back to Saxondale and Avalon. Similarly, the rogue knight Draskus was conceived by designer Mike Rayhawk as an heir to the earlier Black Knights and Dragon Masters. In a mock LEGO Club interview on LEGO.com, the 21st century villain Ogle said that his great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was Vladek, putting Knight's Kingdom definitively seven generations before Ogle's birth. According to his top-secret files on the LEGO website, Ogle may have been immortal, so this still doesn't tell us exactly when Knight's Kingdom takes place, only that it was definitely in the past relative to Alpha Team's 21st century setting. The Evil Knight collectible minifigure biography is a little more helpful. It states that this character worked for Basil the Batlord, Cedric the Bull, and Vladek. Basil is presumably a long-lived vampire, but Cedric is a mere mortal, so this puts both incarnations of Knight's Kingdom within the span of one mercenary's career. There is a time jump during the second Knight's Kingdom theme as rookie knight Jaco is crowned king at the end of one storyline and reappears as an elderly king in the theme's final year. I should note here that there are several sources placing Castle in the 15th century. The Dutch Lego Club newsletter used the 1480s consistently as the setting for classic castle themes. This began with 1486 for the 1986 sets and ran to 1489 when the Forestmen were tied to the new pirate sets. References to the pirate theme persist in many of the modern revisitations of the forest people. While 1489 is much later than most of the other dates given for Castle, this faction undoubtedly existed well into the 16th century, as the Bricklink exclusive 910001 Castle in the Forest has forest people in a castle constructed in 1516. In addition, while not represented by any sets or themes directly, 1432 appears to be a significant year as the Town Square set 60026 has a statue of a castle figure with this date. A Black Falcon statue with this date also appeared in the 2022 Little Golden Book, How to Be a Knight, which used designs from many of the previous castle sets to tell a story about young Milo and his journey to become a Black Falcon Knight. 1600 to 1699, Ninja, 1998. The July-August 1998 Mania magazine gives a date of the 17th century for this theme, making it the latest castle subtheme, chronologically speaking. It depicts a conflict in feudal Japan between the shogun Gidan, who commands the Grey Ninja and Samurai, and Chief Kendo, who leads a band of robbers and commands the Black Ninja. The theme's second wave involved an invasion from a new faction of Red Ninja and their emperor. The ninja later reappear in LEGO battles as allies of the Bluecoat soldiers, indicating that the setting is probably closer to the end of the 17th century. 1489 to 1800 CE, but probably closer to 1700. Pirates. This theme has come and gone over the years, but it has consistently shown a conflict between colonial European soldiers and swashbuckling pirates, mainly Captain Redbeard and his crew, which provide a sort of through line for the theme's storyline. The 2004 and 2015 versions seem to occur before the original 1989 to 97 theme. Check out my biography of Redbeard here on the channel for more on this. The original 1989 theme pitted the pirates against Governor Broadside's settlers, who had discovered the treasure hidden by the pirates' ancestors. The pirate theme is one of the most complicated to place, since there are multiple dates and some pretty obscure sources. 
The earliest pirate concepts made it a sub-theme of Castle, which is probably why the Dutch Lego Club magazine envisions the theme as coexisting with the Castle sets in 1489. The September 1989 issue of the French Lego Club magazine puts it 100 years later, in 1589. The third German Time Cruisers audio drama claims the year is 1602. Two earlier pirate audio dramas were set in 1642 and 1644. A 1991 French comic is set in 1670. Unlike Castle, which has a number of different dates but can be spread over a longer historical period, the entire pirate theme takes place within the lifetime of Captain Redbeard, which means that nearly all of the above dates are mutually exclusive. The most consistently and currently used date is the one from the American set boxes, which puts it sometime in the 18th century. This statement is repeated in the 21322 Pirates of Barracuda Bay instructions. The September-October 1995 Mania magazine gave an exact date of 1700. Lego catalogs from 1990 put the theme about 275 years in the past, which would be 1715. There are some indications in the audio dramas and books that the theme takes place even later than that, but let's leave that alone for right now. The 2009 relaunch of the theme brought back the Imperial Guards, but replaced Redbeard with Captain Brickbeard. The story included with the Pirates of Barracuda Bay set instructions makes it clear that Brickbeard was active around the same time as his classic counterpart. Finally, the idea set 21322 Pirates of Barracuda Bay represents a time many years after the original pirate theme, and includes older versions of at least two of the original pirate characters. The 2022 book The Art of the Minifigure stated that this was 20 years after Captain Redbeard had been stranded on the island. 1872, Wester, 1996 to 1997. Also known as Wild West, this short-lived theme is set in the 19th century American frontier and featured cowboys, Native Americans, bandits, and soldiers. A German Time Cruisers magazine ad provides the specific 1872 date. 1910-1922, Adventurers. Lego's archaeology-based adventure series is set in the early decades of the 20th century and introduced the iconic hero Johnny Thunder. The only exact date for this theme comes from a German audio drama, which puts the Egypt sub-theme in late 1910. The Scooby-Doo set 75900 Mummy Museum Mystery has a portrait of Johnny Thunder posing with the Regal Ruby from the Egyptian sets in a photograph dated 1922. The Egypt sub-theme was followed by adventures set in the South American jungle and a lost island inhabited by dinosaurs. 1924, Pharaoh's Quest, 2011. Pharaoh's Quest has many similarities to the first wave of adventures sets with its Egyptian setting, but features a different cast of characters. According to the LEGO.com online feature, the adventure journal of Professor Archibald Hale, the events of this theme take place in August of 1924. 1925 to 1933, Adventures, Orient Expedition, 2003. The final Adventures theme is set 15 to 23 years after the original Egyptian sets. The 1925 date comes from a German audio drama, while the Lego.com FAQ from 2003 puts the events of this sub theme in 1933. 1932 to 1939, Creator Modular Buildings, 2007 to 2019. The Creator Modular Building series includes a number of buildings that are intended to represent specific decades in the 20th century. The sets 10232 Palace Cinema, 2013, 10197 Fire Brigade, 2009, and 10246 Detective's Office, 2015, form a sort of unofficial 1930s theme, including such period elements as 1930s vehicles and black and white films. The date on the firehouse indicates that the building was constructed in 1932. 1940s, Creator Expert 10278 Police Station. The product description calls out the 1940s era police officers, typewriter, and telephone. 1950s, 10184 Town Plan Set, 2008. Creator Expert 10260 Downtown Diner, 2018. And 10264 Corner Garage, 2019. The 10184 Town Plan set from 2008, released to celebrate 50 years of the Lego brick, was designed to represent the 1950s. The downtown diner and the corner garage were also created in the style of the 1950s with period details like TV sets, an American-style diner, and recording studio. Monster Fighters, 2012. Monster Fighters takes place entirely in the monster realm, making it difficult to put on a timeline. The minifigures traveling from the outside world to challenge the ruling Lord Vampire have steampunk-style clothes, vehicles, and prosthetics, but the character Frank Rock is inspired by the film Rebel Without a Cause, released in 1955. 
A comic in the November 2012 issue of the LEGO Club magazine showed that Lord Vampire's defeat sent a signal to the alien insect enemies of the Galaxy Squad theme. I'm assuming it took a while for the invaders to reach Earth. 1978, Town. The town theme is the first in a whole series of contemporary themes and sub-themes. The first minifigure police station, the first fire station, first shell station, and the first T-junction road plates all appeared in this decade. Trains. Lego Trains was an already established line that became a minifigure-centered supplement theme to town the same year the minifigure was introduced. Boats. As with trains, the LEGO group had already been producing boat sets with a floating base for years before the minifigure, and were also folded into the minifigure range in 1978. Bouncing back to the sub-themes, we've got Airport in 1985, the oh-so-similar flight in 1987, the next town sub-theme is the boat theme Nautica in 1991, an emergency services-themed Rescue, also called Rescue 911, followed by the ocean vacation-themed Paradisia in 1992. 1995, Launch Command. Launch Command marks the beginning of LEGO's own space program. We'll see this evolve into the Space Exploration Agency featured in Classic Space. As we approach the 21st century, we take a lap around 1995's race, into the oh-so-simplified Town Junior, dive for sunken pirate treasure with 1997's divers, definitely not our last time underwater, leave town entirely for a trip down under in the outback, take a very 90s excursion for some exclusive, exciting, extreme sports action with Extreme Team, which was supplemented by the Rescue Service. These emergency responders were deployed to large-scale natural disasters and to tend to Extreme Team's extreme injuries when their stunts didn't go so well. 1999, City Center. Town finally outgrew its small-scale roots and became City Center. Different name, less complicated builds, but still the same fire and police stations. And Spaceport. Following up on Launch Command, the Spaceport theme featured less accurate, more futuristic space vehicles, some with light and sound. They were out to protect Earth from meteors with a mysterious crystal inside each one. Similarly, the 2000 Arctic theme was a contemporary theme with futuristic elements outside of the usual city setting. Meteors are still the focus, but this time around it's ice meteors with alien life forms frozen inside. This will be relevant for future space exploration. LEGO Sports LEGO returned to the soccer arena in the year 2000 with LEGO Sports. This theme would eventually include hockey, basketball, snowboarding, and skateboarding. Launched in conjunction with Steven Spielberg and including a minifigure that resembles the famous director, the LEGO Studios theme included sets based on the production of Jurassic Park 3, shot in 2000, and the original Spider-Man film, shot in 2001. 2001. Alpha Team. LEGO launched its first spy-based theme with Alpha Team after debuting the characters in a PC game the previous year. This includes the first bonafide minifigure supervillain, Ogle, said to be a descendant of Knight's Kingdom's Vlodic, and Dash Justice, the leader of Alpha Team. Ogle commands legions of skeleton drones and has his own rocket ship, which may be important later in the timeline. Life on Mars. Also in 2001, the LEGO space program again leapt ahead of its real-world counterpart by sending a mission to Mars, where they encountered an entire civilization of Martians. This series connected to several themes, with the spaceport book Rocket Rescue featuring BB, a Life on Mars character, training for the upcoming Mars mission, while a comic in the November-December 2001 LEGO Club magazine has the returning astronauts encounter a studio's film crew and Alpha Team. Jack Stone. Not exactly a minifigure, but Jack Stone includes a few references to the rescue emergency surface, and I did include the similar Pirates 4 Plus line, so, well, can do, will do, done. 2002. Ice Planet 2002. <laughs> eh, sort of. So, technically, the LEGO book does imply that the space sub theme takes place in 2002. However, it is usually depicted as being contemporary with LEGO's other space sets in the distant future. The collectible minifigure series Space Miners bio on LEGO.com states that the ice planet from this theme is named Christo 2002 and that it is the source of the ice meteorites from the Arctic sets. Given that Christo is well established in the future as a capital world, I suggest that 2002 was the year Christo was discovered rather than when it takes place. And, sorry, tangent. Moving on. LEGO Island Extreme Stunts, 2002 to 2003. This theme was released to tie in with the video game of the same name and was the first time many of the LEGO Island characters, including Pepper and the Brickster, had appeared in physical form. World City In 2003, LEGO City got another rebranding as World City, bringing it one iteration closer to the theme we know today. Alpha Team Mission Deep Sea Ogle struck again this year, this time his skeleton drones launched from a base in the depths of the ocean and only the Alpha Team could stop them. 2004 
The final Alpha Team mission saw the agents facing down Ogle as he attempted to put time itself into a deep freeze. This might be the end of the theme, but Dash Justice will return. In 2005, City dropped the world branding and became the modern metropolitan building theme that it is today. City encompasses a large number of environments and situations under the City banner, such as jungle exploration, volcano study, and space travel, but most aren't identified as a distinct sub-theme the way they were in the 90s. We'll keep checking into the City space sets as they evolve into the original classic space sets. 2007. Aqua Raiders. Aqua Raiders was a sort of more extreme version of the divers, this time taking place in the Bermuda Triangle with a host of dangerous oversized sea creatures protecting sunken treasure. Not every Aqua Raider will make it out alive. 2008. Agents. Just four years after Alpha Team retired, agents arrived on the scene to take on a rogues gallery full of supervillains, including Dr. Inferno. World Racers. World Racers saw two teams racing around the globe for a reality television show competition, a very 2000s update of the old extreme team concept. Power Miners. Years before Rock Raiders, on this timeline at least, a team of miners, including a scientist named Brains, investigates mysterious earthquakes and finds an entire society of rock monsters living deep beneath Earth's crust. Agents 2.0. Also in 2009, the agents updated to go another round with Dr. Inferno and his henchmen. 2010. Atlantis. This theme saw high-tech underwater explorers follow an old journal to discover the mystery of Atlantis, encountering sea monsters and fish-like warriors along the way. In the theme's second year, they were joined by Brains from the Power Miners theme. The 8078 Portal of Atlantis set included the skeletal remains of an aqua raider, proving that the ocean is a dangerous place. Dino Attack, 2005. Here we see mutant, possibly cyborg dinosaurs attack major cities, with only a rugged team of dino experts standing in their way. The European release of this theme called it Dino 2010, putting the theme five years after it was released in 2005. Ice Planet 2002 aside, this is the first time chronologically that one of LEGO's near-future settings has caught up to the present. 2011, City Space. The City Space sets from 2011 show an important moment in LEGO history, the first appearance of what will become the classic space logo. Alien Conquest. Also in 2011, aliens led by Hypaxis-8 attack Earth. The Alien Defense Force fights back against the invaders, but Hypaxis has a backup plan. The November-December 2011 LEGO Club magazines show that Hypaxis is either a time traveler or incredibly long-lived, as he was previously involved in the downfall of Atlantis, and the rise of Pharaoh Amset-Ra in ancient times, as well as the conclusion of Pharaoh's quest in 1924. In 2012, only two years after the events of Dino Attack, but seven years after its release, dinosaurs emerge from a mysterious portal in a jungle and threaten LEGO cities all over again. The LEGO Magazine comic indicated that this too was the work of Hypaxis 8. Once again, a dino response team was the only thing standing between civilization and prehistoric monsters. This time, the group is led by Josh Thunder, a descendant of Johnny Thunder. The collectible minifigure Dino Tracker's LEGO.com bio indicates that this team is connected to the Dino Attack group, which makes sense. How many specialized dinosaur response teams can there be? In 2015, LEGO introduced the Speed Champions line, which showcased real-world cars from Ford, Chevrolet, Audi, Ferrari, McLaren, and Porsche. These weren't the only Speed Champions in 2015. LEGO's near-future racers sub-theme Drome Racers, released in 2002, took place in this year and saw all kinds of cars competing in the artificial Drome environment completed by the mysterious mastermind Dromulus. Some cars featured tiny versions of minifigures, while others contained no minifigures at all. 2019. City Space. The City Space sets released in 2019 had another variation of the classic space logo as we continue to get closer to space on the timeline. Hidden Side. The Hidden Side theme pitted smartphone-wielding teenagers against cursed souls from beyond the grave in the small American town of Newbury. 2020. Monkey Kid. In this theme, Monkey Kid discovers the legendary staff of the equally legendary Monkey King and defends his city from an army of bull clones. I'm unclear on whether this theme takes place in the contemporary LEGO world with fantasy elements, or if it's in a world of its own, like Ninjago. Speaking of being comprehensive, the world of LEGO video, with its pop star llama and genre-blending entertainers, is equally baffling. But it's so representative of the LEGO group's idea of what they think kids want in 2021 that I pretty much had to include it. City Stunts. This theme includes flywheel-powered stunt bikes and is the first city sub-theme I can find that has its own distinct name and branding. It also features the character Rocket Racer from the LEGO Racers video games, who had previously appeared as an older man in the Drome Racers video game set in 2015. 
Given that Rocket Racer is a known time traveler, this isn't a contradiction. 2022. City Space. City again returns to provide the precursor to the classic space theme in what sounds like the future but is actually the present, 2022. This year sees a lunar base established, as well as a return to Mars. Galaxy Squad, 2013. At this point, we're finally past the present day and into LEGO's future with its last space theme, Galaxy Squad. This saw a team of colorful space ops soldiers take on an invasion of insect aliens. This is far enough in the future that space colonies and tourism exist, but it's still within the lifetime of Alpha Team Agent Dash Justice. This is because the LEGO.com bio for the Spy Collectible minifigure has him rescuing Galaxy Squad member Solomon Blaze during this time. LEGO Factory, Star Justice vs. Space Skulls. The almost forgotten Star Justice set was based on designer Chris Giddens' pre-classic space concept, which imagined a bridge between the near-future life on Mars and city space sets and the classic LEGO space themes. The old LEGO.com game My LEGO Network said that the leader of the Space Skulls, Bob Skull, had been active as a space pirate for about 50 years. I like to think the Space Skulls are rogue ogle drones, putting this theme about 50 years after Alpha Team. 2050. Space Police. 1989. The earliest official date for any of the space themes is 2050, from the French magazine LEGO AS No. 2. This date is given for the first wave of Space Police sets. I would think the uniform design would put this sub-theme later, after Classic Space. Rock Raiders According to the video game released alongside the sets, the Rock Raiders were aboard the LMS Explorer when it was stranded in another galaxy, forcing its crew to brave the underground caverns of the unknown planet U in order to mine energy crystals. They are challenged by many dangers, including the native rock monsters. Teleportation and intergalactic mining are both established technologies by this point. The game's manual says that there's a rumor that the elderly chief character encountered rock monsters in his youth. I'd like to think that this means that the Chief was a young man during the events of Power Miners in 2009 on Earth, since no one had encountered Planet U's rock monsters before. That speculation is the best I have as to when this theme takes place. Ultra Agents 2014 Ultra Agents was set in the near-future metropolis of Astor City, and saw a new team of LEGO secret agents investigating mysterious portals that turned ordinary citizens into supervillains. LEGO designer Austin Carlson stated that the design brief for this theme placed it 20 years after Galaxy Squad, which is supported by the presence of an older Solomon Blaze as the leader of the Ultra Agents. Classic Space, 2079 this is the theme that all of the LEGO Near Future Space themes have been building towards. A possible date of 2079 appears on two monitor pieces in the Classic Space Sets 926 Command Center, 493 Space Command Center, and 6970 Beta 1 Command Base. 2210 Racers. This far future date was mentioned on the LEGO Racers webpage. The inhabitants of planet Zalex are fearless drivers who are wild about racing. This non-minifigure theme was tied to the existing minifigure world by the time-traveling Rocket Racer in LEGO Racers 2. 2600s. Ideas 21109 Exosuit. We can assume that the classic space era extended all the way into the 2600s by the uniforms in this set. The teaser image makes it clear that the exosuit was built in the year 2564, while the 21109 exosuit instruction book says it was rediscovered by two classic space astronauts decades later. By this time, there is an interplanetary federation that is in charge of the classic space forces. 3147 to 3200. Explorians, 1996. These astronauts work to chart the vast unknown universe. The earliest date for the Explorians is 3147 from a 1996 magazine ad. The March 1996 Bricks and Pieces magazine has a slightly later date at 3200. The faction is still active in the distant future during the second Time Cruisers audio drama. 3777. Time Cruisers, 1996. You wouldn't think it to look at them, but the home time period of the Time Cruisers, Dr. Cyber and his nephew Tim Timebuster, is the year 3777, according to the first German Time Cruisers audio drama. This pushes many of the space themes far into the future relative to this date. Their opponents, the Time Twisters Professor Millennium and Tony Twister, don't appear in any of the audio dramas and could be from any point in history. Circa 4000. Aquazone. This theme features the heroic Aquanauts battling their villainous offshoot, the Aquasharks, in an underwater world known only as Aquazone. While early concepts made Aquazone a sub-theme of space, the final product wasn't explicitly tied to any space sets, so the only information we have on its chronological placement also comes from the first Time Cruiser's audio drama. Here, an Aquanaut states that he had heard about the Time Cruiser vehicles being built a few decades prior, putting this theme in the near future relative to Time Cruiser's. 
Aqua Raiders. The Aqua Raiders were a third faction in Aqua Zone that strikes from hidden caves to steal hydrolator crystals from both the Aqua Sharks and the Aquanauts. Meanwhile, in an unexplored area of Aqua Zone, the Hydronauts challenged the menacing Stingray forces for their own supply of hydrolator crystals. 4036 Futuron, 1987 The redesigned uniforms for Futuron inspired by classic space imply a different and later time period for this and subsequent sets. Futuron is to classic space what Star Trek The Next Generation is to the original series. Most space factions from this point on are shown to coexist, so this time period may span generations. The date for this theme comes from the LEGO Ideas book, where a classic space minifigure seems to identify a Futuron minifigure as being dressed in the style of 4036. It is a bit of a stretch, but it is consistent with the idea of the late 80s through early 90s space themes existing in the future of the Time Cruiser's 3777 setting. We do see some holdovers from Classic Space interact with Futuron astronauts, indicating that the Classic Space style was around for a very long time indeed. Blacktron, 1987. Blacktron makes its first physical appearance here, and it quickly became the go-to evil organization of the space theme. Blacktron forces have been described as criminals, spies, and space pirates, but early depictions suggest a more nuanced, potentially heroic force. Space Police. The original incarnation of the Space Police wore the same uniform as the Futuron faction, showing that they are part of the same interstellar organization. They were frequently shown apprehending Blacktron suspects, casting these two space factions as opposing forces. Mtron. This group uses advanced magnets in all of their projects, including salvage operations, mining, and computer research. Mtron is shown interacting with both Futuron and many of the subsequent space themes, indicating that this faction spans the time between eras. Blacktron Future Generation. Like its predecessor, Blacktron Future Generation has been described as both heroes and villains. They are led by Commander Beltar and are based on the planet V2. Their name implies that this theme is a future version of the original Blacktron theme. They are shown to interact with both Futuron and Mtron, implying that these factions have also been around for generations. Space Police 2, 1992. The second incarnation of the Space Police is radically redesigned, indicating a possible jump in time from their Futuron-affiliated predecessors. They are led by Captain Magenta. The Space Police serve the United Galaxies, which is ruled by a galactic council, but aren't immune to corruption. Ice Planet 2002, 1993. This planet exists in a remote part of the universe and is home to Commander Bear and his Ice Rangers, who develop powerful satellites. It seems to be affiliated with the same space faction as Futuron, as the logo is similar. Spyrus, 1994. The Spyrians are led by the robotic Major Kartofsky and specialize in galactic espionage. In the first Time Cruisers audio drama, we learn that the Spyrius robots are more technologically advanced than the Time Cruisers robot. No surprise there, since he seemed to be powered by a key turn motor. This means that Spyrius, and by extension all directly related space themes, take place sometime after Time Cruisers. Unitron, 1994. The Unitron forces operated from the crossroads of the universe and were often the opponents of Spyrius. Roboforce, 1997. Roboforce rides into action on giant mechs protecting the galaxies from hostile UFO invaders. UFO, 1997. Ruled by the menacing Alpha Draconis, the UFO forces identify themselves as the Star People and are known as both liberators and conquerors depending on the story. While UFO aliens are shown to be in conflict with the Explorians and Roboforce factions of this time period, TV ads and LEGO Click magazine comics show that this is an ancient faction that has been in contact with Earth since the 12th century. Insectoids, 1998. Hailing from the same homeworld as the UFO aliens, the Insectoids are a refugee faction that settled on a hollow planet filled with giant insects. They modified their space vehicles to match. The DK book Insectoid Invasion showed the Insectoids using Explorian, UFO, and Ice Planet vehicles, indicating that they are from the same time period. Master Builder Academy, 2011. The Master Builder Academy was an instructional series that featured spaceships and time machines. It was light on story, but a timeline in the 20215 Invention Designer booklet puts this theme in the relative past to the 2009 Space Police theme. Mars Mission, 2007. This theme featured a return to Mars with astronauts seeking precious biodium and fighting against malevolent alien invaders. These astros wear the classic space emblem, and judging from their advanced spacecraft, are seemingly intended to be set after the original life on Mars sets. A 2045 date for this theme persists on the sub-themed Wikipedia page, and to be honest, this makes more sense than its placement here. The only problem is, 
I can't find any official material that confirms this. The game LEGO Battles shows that this theme takes place after the time of Blacktron Future Generation because we see a skeleton with this uniform, and at the same time as Space Police 3, so I have placed it here for now. Space Police 3, 2009. The most recent incarnation of the Space Police fights alien criminals from the Black Hole Gang in Galaxy City. There are numerous references to past space themes in the Space Police Logs videos that accompany the theme, putting Space Police 3 as the latest space entry on the timeline. As a side note, the 2010 movie Lego The Adventures of Clutch Powers uses models from several Lego themes including Castle, Power Miners, and Space Police 3. Since Space Police 3 is the furthest on this timeline, I'm using this placement for the movie as well, which will become relevant. Exoforce, 2007. Exoforce saw a team of human mech pilots battle against a robot rebellion for the control of Sentai Mountain in the Golden City. There's not a lot of information tying the storyline to other LEGO themes, but there have been a few Easter eggs in Ninjago, with Exoforce robots in 71741 Ninjago City Gardens, and a schematic of Sentai Mountain in the 70725 Nindroid Mech Dragon, as well as the droids being used by the invading aliens on Mars in the LEGO Battles game. Ninjago, 2011. At this point, Ninjago probably needs no introduction, as it's essentially the biggest and most influential LEGO original theme that has arguably crowded out most of the others on this timeline. The storyline centers around a team of teenage ninjas who train under Master Wu and fight his evil brother, the Snake People from the planet's interior, evil robots, and Master of the Elements, Sky Pirates, etc. etc. Ninjago has its own detailed mythology and universe that may or may not be connected to the LEGO themes that came before it. What it does have is a connection to Clutch Powers, the main character from the 2010 movie of the same name. Powers appears in several episodes of the Ninjago TV show from the 11th season onward, and is a physical minifigure in two sets. This version of Clutch is at least a decade older, and his personality is quite different from his original appearance. It's possible that he's just another variant of Clutch in the Ninjago universe, but it seems reasonable to assume that Clutch comes from the same time period, no matter which universe he's from. Legends of Chima, 2013 Our last stop on this timeline tour is the Legends of Chima theme, which features animalistic inhabitants of the land of Chima locked in a conflict over Chi crystals. This theme definitely takes place in a different universe from Ninjago and appears as a fictional cartoon in both the LEGO City shorts and the Nexo Knights TV show. However, it is directly connected to Ninjago as one of its 16 parallel realms, as shown when Ninjago characters briefly crossed over into Chima during the Ninjago Season 5 Episode 10 Curse World Part 2. We can reasonably assume the two themes take place at the same time, just in two different universes. That's it for now. I hope that you all enjoyed this tour through LEGO history. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe because we'll be coming back to explore the timeline in greater detail in future episodes.